Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss seven habits for PhDs which will make you very effective. So let's start with number one and this is that use your first year well. Now most people when they get admission into a PhD program they land up in the university they spend time looking for a room in the dorm or the hostel or setting themselves up in some apartment complex and then slowly beginning their path to doing work. Now what happens is that there is a big change from the coursework mindset at the bachelor and master level to this research mindset at the PhD level and many students waste a lot of time in their first year because their supervisor may tell them to take only a couple of courses every semester or in fact sometimes they may not have to take any courses at all. So in those kind of situations, the students essentially loiter around the university, they waste their time in watching movies, visiting nearby malls, playing games as the case may be, and then they do not actually spend their time in learning some of the skills which they need for their PhD such as LaTeX which is the typesetting language which is widely used in academia and also tools such as MATLAB, Python, Excel as the case may be which are required to make nice plots which will be important for any PhD dissertation or writing papers. Now one of the things you should make sure is that you have your PhD proposal done by the end of the first year and that you finish all your required coursework. So most of the time PhDs will also go with some kind of research training program and this will be a set of courses you need to take so that you can figure out the literature in your research field. So make sure you finish all this by the first year and use your first year well. Now the next issue is meet your advisor regularly and this is important because in many cases advisors are very busy and they may not have a regular schedule. They may be monk like in character, they may be busy writing a book, they may be busy writing proposals or teaching their own classes. So make sure that you set up a weekly appointment with them and if your advisor is not somebody who wants to have a scheduled appointment just show up in his room once a week randomly after some time you will be able to figure out your advisor's timing and when or he he or she keeps some time in the department so make sure you meet your advisor now don't go to your advisor and just tell him or her that you are doing very well everything is working fine and so on because he will of course be very pleased nod his head and so on you need to give him negative feedback about what's not going well in your research and sometimes this may create situations where some conflict is there between you and your supervisor he may call you lazy he may think you are not doing any work but it's important to manage this conflict to handle this kind of situation because if you are always trying to be very nice then you will not communicate properly with your supervisor so in many cases in communications they say that it's important to be able to resolve and manage conflict because whenever you are working with the supervisor there is always an issue of conflict between his or her expectations about your work and your expectations about how he should be supervising you so make sure you address these issues now the third issue is that plan for a paper as soon as you start your phd and many people do not do that they think their advisor is going to tell them about a paper and sometimes this may happen if your advisor is a motivated person maybe he or she wants to get tenure at the university or get promotion but in some cases especially with senior professors they may just let you figure out your work they may think you are just spending time learning the research topic figuring out the university and so on and they may not tell you a thing in your first or second year but make sure that in your first year you have made some plans about a paper at least the title and have some idea when you are writing your research proposal as to what is going to be the title of your first paper now suddenly in the first year and the second year especially in the second year you need to sit down and try to write this paper now paper writing is of course important because it will help you get a job if you are of course applying to postdoc or faculty position job will be directly tied with the number of papers and the quality of the papers which you have but even if you are going for an industry position most of the time they like to see that you have some papers these may be conference papers also that's okay but journal papers are always preferable try to publish in the 
web of science journals or in society journals as I have said many times. Now the fourth habit you need to have is create a set of people who will write references for you. So get three to five references because whenever you are finished with your PhD and start applying for postdoc positions, faculty positions or even company positions, all these will require you to fill the name of three to five references and you don't want to be giving the name of the same three references every time. So maybe have a set of six people and rotate between them depending on their proclivities and their particular research interests and so on. Now, how do you develop this uh, set? Essentially, you can take some classes in the department. You can talk to various experts in the field if you are going to conferences and even try to impress the editors of journals with your papers in case they correspond with you. All these people are prospective references for you and make it a point to cite people's work when you write your papers because later you can approach them and say, hey, I have cited all these papers of you and can I give your name as a reference since you are an expert in the field and most people are very happy that you say they are an expert in the field and that you have cited their papers. These things can be correlated and they should go together. Now the fifth point is that you need to make friends in the lab and this will of course help you to do your research faster. Many things can be learned from people in the lab in minutes which can take you days of time in terms of learning them from manuals or from the internet. So whether it is a LaTeX template for a PhD thesis or it is a MATLAB code to do some of the basic one in your lab or an Excel spreadsheet to help you manage the data gathering, collection and cleaning. All these things are much easier if you obtain them from some lab mate and if there is some postdoc working in your department, you can take their help also. These are always very useful. Now, beside knowing things about technology, you learn a lot about the politics and the soft power issues in your field and lab. So they may be able to tell you who are the people who do not like your PhD supervisor. So you know where not to submit your papers, which journals are not in the realm or they do not like the way of thinking of your supervisor or your lab group. And so you will know all these soft points which are important if you are going to make a success of your PhD program. Now the next point is that write your thesis in the third year and sometime it may be the case that you do not have enough results at this point but make it a point that you start thinking about your thesis at this stage. You write out a title and a table of contents and you confront your supervisor with this title and table of content and see if he or she agrees to it because this will suddenly make the supervisor realize that three years have gone by and maybe you have not accomplished much in which case he can speed up your work because very often PhD supervisors do not remember exactly when their students joined the university. So it may be that you may have been there for five years and your supervisor may think that you have been for three years. These type of cases are actually quite common. It's only when they start receiving letters from the dean or somebody else that five years has gone by and you have not submitted your thesis that they realize that you have been staying there for a, a long period of time and maybe you need to start doing more of your research work. Now the last point is that take care of self and this is a habit which is very important for PhD students because what happens is that all this research work, all this spending time thinking about what research work to do takes a toll on your physical and mental health. So make sure that you keep your physical health okay by eating nutritious foods, lots of fruits and vegetables and also make sure that you do not eat too much junk food because there is a lot of junk food out there on campuses and it may not be good for you to eat this junk food for many years when you are doing your PhD because you are not as young as a bachelor degree student and eating these kind of food can have deleterious consequences on your health. Beside that, make sure you go to gym or take part in sports or you take part in some musical things going on in your university because all these take your mind off from research because if you are somebody who is doing a PhD then you are going to get a lot of negative feedback. Your papers are going to be rejected. You are going to receive harsh reviews and even your supervisor is going to give you a dressing down every now and then. So you want to make sure that 
you are continuing to work and you are doing good work in the department while your health and mental health are all fine. So these were some of the habits I had for you for being an effective PhD student. I hope you will benefit from this video. Stay tuned to my channel and do subscribe and like all my videos because that's something which YouTube really appreciates. Thank you very much. See you soon.